drop out here. I'll give you a rundown of the rosters because you might not be quite so familiar with these guys anymore. SKR, Freddy122, formerly against all authority in LCS in the top lane. Svenskern, former NIP and Copenhagen Wolves in the jungle. Jezus, who's in the mid lane, former solo Q player, superstar extraordinaire, and had a great game when we cast their match against End Faculty before. Uh, and then, of course, the old boys, Candy Panda and Nif, the real Nif, not Naruto or Nif, who does look like Nif. He does. He He's does. a Spanish Nif. He's Spanish Nif. We called him that for a while, and then we went out to party, and then he annoyed us because he kept referring to himself as Spanish Nif over and over and over again. So the bands we see coming in. No, I didn't do Millennium yet. They're Doyfee be <laughs> in the top lane. I'm so fresh in the jungle. Schleyer, who of course was also in against all authority uh, in the spring split. Nanook, the AD carry, and Dude, who, by the way, was in against all authority in the spring split. And if you remember against all authority, at the time he came into the team, they became amazing. They did so well. They they almost, I think they went like seven and three or something over the course of a couple of weeks. Um, and then I, 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 Fortunately, though, they didn't requalify in the spring split, easy for me to say. But the band's coming in, Joe. Can you go through them really quickly? Because I want to say something in particular. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Cassidy and Gragas band out here from SK. Shivana and Aatrox band out for Millennium. Okay, so as we know, Sven Skarin, he's an amazing Jarvan player. That's pretty much what he goes to if it's not Zin Zhao. We saw him playing against in faculty, and we could tell his Jarvan it was not touched at all. But it hasn't been banned away yet. I'm really curious because I'm so fresh as well. He was like the first guy to run Jungle Kale, if you remember back in, uh, I think it was even in season two he did that. And he ran it in the summer promotion tournament as well on top of that. So that isn't going to be taken away from him. And that means he's going to get really comfortable champions. He might go for like a Nunu, which he did go for quite a bit. I'm not exactly sure if he's actually going to go for that. But I think Orion is going to be a really contested pick between these two teams because we yeah. saw Jezus against the faculty amazing. His ultimates were spot on. Schley in the game just prior went 12-3, and three, I believe, with his Oriana uh, when they're playing against H2K. But Jarvan will get banned out here. Uh, and just for you guys in chat, we do have a stream delay on here. So you, uh, this is a message to the past. Uh, <laughs> doing exclamation mark skin code does absolutely nothing in chat. So you can just stop doing that. I know that's just going to make you do it more for a while. Probably, yeah. Uh, but it doesn't actually do anything. So I'm sure the sensible amongst you will just, in fact, stop. So first pick here was Renekton for Freddy122, one of his big go-to champions, as we saw in the spring split. And I'm really curious, will Schley and Dude be able to know how Freddy still plays from the spring split and kind of counter him a little bit? Maybe try to gank him often? I mean, they know his champion pool, but getting the Renekton to be on someone very comfortable. And this now, to me, is what is Sven Segarin going to play? Is Oriana going to be picked up early from Millennium to kind of keep that champion away from SK? Or are they going to go for something completely different? It looks like that's actually what they're going to do. Well, currently hovering over Corky here. Uh, and with Vi taken away from I'm So Fresh, wouldn't surprise me to see some Lee Sin, a very... You know, I'm So Fresh pretty much known for his Lee Sin. Him and Hercule bot in Europe were like the best Lee Sin player. I don't know what it is about French people and the blind monk, but... That seemed to be and pretty, Herkibot was on pretty, Millennium, wasn't he? Pretty good at him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Doigby did uh, take the Ari there for Millennium. Let's not forget, this is a good point to talk about it. Again, we did it in the first game, but we are in tournament realm here, and we are a patch behind. So 3.12, three we're on, not 3.13, which is what's on live. Uh, so the Ari change is not actually in the patch uh, for this game. And also, Jinx, you can see her there. She's... Where? There she is. Look, she's all grayed out. She's looking old. Uh, but Elise and Thresh were picked up for SK, just to get back on topic. Okay, so it looks like Svenskeren's actually going to go for an Elise jungle here, and we're going to see Nif back on that Thresh. And I'm really, I want to know, because Svenskeren, he always does really well with aggressive junglers. Like, that's what we saw him yeah. do so well in the spring and summer split. Elise is obviously one of those champions, but just as we saw a little bit earlier on with Copenhagen Wolves versus TCM, you know, Amazing didn't get a great early start, but he was able to turn it around as the uh, game progressed a little bit later on, the Fiddlesticks, I would actually love to see a Fiddle support or even potentially a jungle. I'm going to go I, for I, it's support. It's most likely support, yeah, but I, I know Fresh has, been, has played Fiddlesticks jungle quite a bit, but obviously that was like six patches ago, so I'm not sure if he's going to go for that. Well, we see Shen picked up there as well, which is going into the top lane. No doubt about that. Oh, man. I say no doubt about that. I could end up being in jungle, Shen, but not... Not going for that one. Uh, Candy Panda going to get Caitlyn, the champion, which uh, all the way back to his uh, game. I absolutely am saying game. I don't think Caitlyn was actually there at that point. I think only when uh, they joined SK that Caitlyn actually came out. There's a lot of champions that have been coming out for a long time now. So I remember Caitlyn came out right 
after I started playing the game. That was like two years ago. So last week. <laughs> okay. Uh, and a Nidalee, a middle in Italy for Jezus. That's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, I mean, those spirits are always awesome to see land. Thing for me, though, it's Candy Panda on that Caitlyn. If you give him an AD carry that he's really comfortable with, like Vayne or Caitlyn as he has now, he can be so dominated in lane, not to mention that range he does have, obviously, over Corky and then Nidalee. I'm, we're going to be seeing a lot of oohs because every time that spear hits and they drop 75% health, it's just amazing to see. Of course, on the other side of that, it's really scary to have happen to you. And what am I going to go for as our last pick, though? That's the real question here. And it looks like it will most likely be a jungler, but what does I'm So Fresh actually want to run? Like I was saying before, you said Lee Sin. He's also playing Nunu. And he also plays Kale Jungle, obviously back in the day. And it looks like Nocturne might be that man. Huh, so that'd be really scary to actually go up against. Imagine a Nocturne ulting and then Shen ulting in as well. You won't actually see him coming normally. Yeah, and also the fact that you got Fiddle in there, you got Fears going off all over the place. In Surprise the of party, fight, Fiddlesticks. Running around doing nothing. We'll be Nocturne locked in here then for Millennium. So, throwing you through the teams for SK, we're going to have Freddy122 on Renekton, uh, Svenskuren on Elise, Jezus on Nidalee, Candy Panda on Caitlyn, and Nif on Thresh. The other side will be Doigby on Shen, I'm So Fresh on Nocturne, Schleyer on Ari, Nanook on Corky, and Dude on Fiddlesticks. And if my mind serves me right, the first week that Dude came into the LCS, he played Fiddlesticks. I don't remember. That was a lot of games ago. That was a lot. I remember of Darker did in week one, or week one of uh, LCS Summer Split. Could be that I got Darker <laughs> and Dude. They've got the same first letter of the name. I can see how you get them too confused, Joe. So that's how it possibly <laughs> comes in from that yeah. one. Okay, so these two, these two lives I have going on. I'm going to talk, I guess, a little bit about them before we fully get in the game. Did he kick it again? I kicked the disco light <sighs> again, guys. Disco lights everywhere. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why we put a light under the I table. I don't know either. That's where does it even show? That, it's, that's for feet. Yeah, but where does it show? On the wall behind us, look. Oh, okay. I don't know why it's there. <laughs> I don't know why it's there, but I, I don't know. These studio building guys are all funky. You know, they're like, let's put a light where their feet should be. That'll really <laughs> screw them. I swear I've almost broke this thing a thousand times. Well, your legs are like 400 times longer than a normal mm -hmm. man's legs anyway, so no real surprise about that one. But we are going to be getting into the game. Let's talk a bit about the lineups like you okay. just wanted to do before I, I kick the light. I did. So for Millennium, it's, it's one of those teams that just kind of, I want to say appears out of nowhere, but not in the sense of just showing up on the map, but in terms of Nocturne can give you that Shroud of Darkness, can give you that... that uh, ability to get in there really quickly or to, to pretty much catch them off guard. So when you have a Shen that can ulti in during that, you have a Fiddlestick who can ulti in, you have an Ari who's very mobile with their ultimate, and then you have Nocturne fight in, they can catch you really quickly. They can hit one target very fast and blow them up most likely. But for SK side, they have honestly a lot of damage, but it's dependent on the fact whether or not Jezus can land a Nidalee Spear. But if that happens, then you can obviously have Elise try to try to dive in, as well as Renekton doing the same, and you can kind of pile everything on top of that. And the candy pan on that Caitlyn going to be just trying to poke them down as much as possible. Indeed. I <laughs> uh, just had to have a bit of a cough there. We've got a pause anyway in the game. It's nice to see as well that I'm so Fresh is still, in fact, loading in on his Game Boy uh, every time. I always remember waiting for I'm so Fresh and... We should do some kind of donation to get him up to speed on technology. Uh, but we've got a pause here. Not sure exactly why we've got a pause, but we do, in fact, have a pause. I'm not sure. I didn't have chat on. Okay, so Candy Panda said he needs a sec real quick. Uh, you know what it is. These pro players like to do it often. They hang around waiting, and then they're like, toilet. <laughs> Need a toilet now. Uh, just I was just going to say that too. We're about to go for that one. So Candy Panda needs a second, but we're going to be getting started off here in just a little bit of a time, which gives us the opportunity to talk about upcoming Intel Extreme Masters events. Of course, true. Uh, Intel Extreme Masters Cologne will be taking place on the, the 23rd and 24th yeah. of November. Good job, Jason, because I totally lost that one out of my <laughs> brain. Uh, we'll have a pro and an amateur tournament. This, of course, is a qualifier for the I'm a, I don't like to call it amateur. It's not even amateur anymore. It's not even that. We've got two LCS teams in there uh, for the qualifiers. NIP obviously already voted in there. Uh, and even these challenger teams, challenger is a much nicer word. Well, right amateur. now, every team that's in a position to qualify currently within the semifinals is already qualified for the promotion tournament. 
as well as NIP. So yeah. it's gonna it's not even amateur at this point. It's it's like just barely under professional because they're obviously not in LCS. But either way, it's probably gonna be just as exciting, if not more, than the pro tournament. And then we'll be moving one week later. As our producer is like, I want to go a game, guys. He's got his finger in the air ready and everything. And we got another pause. Sad times. Had a Candy Panda again. Is it, is it Candy Panda again? Yeah. He's like, actually, just a little bit more. Just, yeah, just a little bit more of a bladder. got to get out. Um, but what were you going to say? Singapore coming up. Singapore. That's going to be fun. Really love Singapore. Last time I went to Singapore, I shaved my head. Uh, this time in Singapore, I'm not going to shave my head. Just saying. That's disappointing. Actually, I really wanted to do it last time, but you had the actual guy that shaves his Jason, head normally. Jason, you might have, you might be able to shave Ooh. your beard. No, it's too glorious already. It's too perfect. It's very patchy. It is. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. But anyways, the game started. We should go into there, Joe. Yeah, my, cam about my camera is in fact broken. So uh... now try. There you Yay. go. Yay! It's You're fixed welcome. again. Let's get some sounds in there as well. Uh, as we see a taunt there coming on to Candy Panda. Actually, a hook lands on towards Doug with a charm. Not quite in position. Spear just flashing by, but there's a flash from Candy Panda. Ah, and the Piltover Peacemaker will pick up first blood for SK Gaming. It couldn't have gone any better. And it went over to Candy Panda in his lane, which you don't want to see happen. But a lot of action happening in the very beginning of the game. I was expecting to be a little bit more calm, a little bit more, uh, you know, withheld of trying to you know, throw anything off early on. But we have to remind you, it is the best of three. Yes. So obviously this first map, you can lose it and still come back in the end. And Candy Panda returning back to lane with boots. This is not going to be good if you're in a nuke. No, that is that is really bad times, to be honest. Uh, but we'll see. We'll see how it all works out. We've seen stranger things than a first blood being uh, turned around True. in the early stages of the game. We are going to have Dude, who is a pirate fiddlesticks for this one, Yar. I was a bit Irish and a bit pirate. Yeah, but it will be Pirish. a 2v1. Pirish or irat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but right now, I'm looking at this and looking at the items uh, start <clears throat> starting up for both his teams. And Nif actually went for four green wards. So he actually won't be able to spot out Fiddle 6 if he was in lane against him to stop you know from a level 6 ultimate coming in. But they will have the lane swaps happening. So you'll have Caitlyn and Thresh who can harass Shen under turret very, very easily against a Corky and a Fiddle Six top lane against a Renekton. So in the end, I think most likely that Renekton should be able to farm up better than uh, Doigby here on the Shen. You know what I think he wanted to do there, Nif, from the start? I think they wanted to get... Ward control in that, the jungle? That ward in there, or yeah. that ward, or that ward, whatever, uh, to see exactly if this 2v1 was going to come in or what was going on there with a four ward start. Either way, he's going to have a lot of vision in this early stage of the game. Man, well, he doesn't even need it. That's, that's sadly the oh, point yeah. since he's in that 2v1, but I think you're definitely right on that in terms of wanting to see where it is going to be. But Doi being caught with a pole there. And look at that damage already, and they're shoving this turret very quickly. I think they want to take this down right away. Wow, Nif is uh, he's landing them hooks today. He's not messing around. And good start here once again. Doug be super low underneath the tower, and that turret itself is going to be taking a whole lot of damage uh, as things go on. Nocturne's probably going to have to go babysit that bottom lane a little bit. As in this mid lane, we see that Jezus just hitting that level three, is slightly ahead, somehow managing to squeeze a spear right through the minions onto Schleyer as well. Really interesting to see how this Nidalee works out for him. Yeah, it's it's it really dependent on early on. Obviously, both these two mid laners can roam around very quickly and very easily, so I'm, I think that's what's going to come down to, who can outrun the other. In terms of, you know, the laning phase, it's, it's, maybe it's outskilling each other, but it's pretty even across the board since they can keep healing, and Ari doesn't have that potential to burst someone down early on. Jesus already forced onto his time. We saw Nocturne coming down just as we expected here. I'm so fresh. Gonna have to give his teammate a little bit of protection because the pressure's been high as another hook's gonna land there. And well, the passive of Candy Panda there also perfectly timed with that hook. They've done so much damage to Dogby. He has to back away completely. Sven Skrun's here. They're going for a very hard push on this tower. And they want to get Freddy out of this lane right away. Even though he's ahead in CS, their turret's already getting pushed down very low. And by seeing I'm so fresh there, it allows Freddy to keep farm up as much as possible in that lane if he wants to. And we will see the first turret of the game go down about 4.30. Wow, crazy, crazy push start from uh, SK here. I mean, the top lane, Freddy's tower's not super healthy either, to be honest with you. He would uh, just uh, taking some damage as well, but they've kept those auto attacks up. I'll throw it down to half, but SK here destroying the minion wave before it even gets in range of this turret. That's going to both starve Doigby of more farm 
and also mean that this turret is going to be going down on this next push here. Nice play from SK Game. Where are they going here, though? Having a bit of a walk up towards the jungle. There's those, uh, those wards coming in handy after all. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Since they pushed that down, but Doby actually getting caught here. What? Why? I'm not really that sure why he's there, to be honest with you. He's going to go down from this one. It's actually Nif that picks up the kill there, uh, I believe, with his Ignite. Yep. I'm looking for Nif. Yeah, it was his Ignite. Um, so that's the first kill for after the turret went down. <laughs> <laughs> Tried to get myself out of that one. I forgot about the early first blood. And they're uh, still going, though. They're still yeah, pushing this turret I mean. down. They're, they took the first turret. And no one's there to stop them right now. But they're not messing around. They're going to come back into this one, or at least try to come back around to this one. But there's another wave of minions coming in. And I think this turret's gone down. Doigby is trying to get down there. He's died twice already. And he's lost both turrets in less than six minutes. What a start for SK. This is a fantastic start for them because they're able to do that. Instead of Sven scaring going top and trying to keep Freddy alive, since they saw I'm so fresh there, and actually he was even going down before they even happened, but because I'm so fresh went down there, it allowed uh, Freddy to keep farming. It allowed them to push that turret down. And when you have a Caitlyn, you can harass under tower, you can push lanes so quickly that you can't really do much against it. And because of that, Doi V loses out on two turrets and is going to have a really tough time now uh, sitting in this lane. Oh, dude, you just screwed that one up, Sunshine. He's going down Freddy 1v2 underneath the tower. Actually, he's going to lose his turret here, and Anouk not going for him on that one. What is going on in this game? It's all a SK's bit winning right now. That's it's all a that's, bit sloppy it, yeah, from Millennium. Yeah, I completely agree. It, it is a little bit sloppy, and I, I, I don't know actually how long Millennium's been together with this lineup that they're currently running. I know it's been a little bit, though, considering that Shalea um, has they're been with for them, Dragon for a couple of months. <laughs> Why not? Well, yeah, I mean, it's not as if there's any turret anywhere near in that bottom lane. We can and look see at the words they, they have to have is. They've got a load of wards because Nif started off with four and has already got a sight stone plus a pink and another green ward. This is going to be two turrets plus the dragon plus three kills in less than seven minutes for SK Gaming. And Dude, oh no, you are... This is bad news. He's hooked Cocoon. He's dead. It's Candy Panda that gets that one. And SK, they're absolutely tearing Millennium a new one. And Joe, we're seven minutes in, and we already have a 3,000 gold lead coming in. Sorry, 2,000. Yeah, 3,000 gold lead. I can math. But right now, that is just so uh, fantastically well done by SK. They've been controlling that. Aww. They're going to control blue buff as well with the wards that Nif was able to put down. But will I'm so fresh be able to keep this one? I think he will have a spine available, but will he use it on blue? Well, that's the thing. If they can at he least, has to. if they can at least force this smite, if they can force I'm so fresh, oh. no, Sven's going to get sick. They get the hook. They've landed the cocoon here. I'm so fresh tries to speed himself away from it, but he's not going to get away. Nif will thrash him down. Nanook has to Valkyrie off dudes coming in to uh, die again, maybe, if he keeps going forward like that. But SK, not only does Svenskun outsmite I'm so fresh there, they manage to pick up the kill with the cocoon and the. Uh, uh, death sentence landed onto him. <laughs> Forgot its name. Uh, the hook. That's easy enough. Um, and speaking of hooks, Jezit is taking down this middle turret. It's got nothing to do with hooks. Yeah, I was going to say, is there something that I don't understand? But yeah, I mean, people were always questioning SK, you know, with Ocelot stepping down, bringing in Jezus, with Herkybot and Kevin both going over to NIP, will they be able to form a lineup that can do well? And I think we're seeing right here that they're proving everyone that they can. They're doing fantastic in this game. They're completely controlling it left and right. Now almost a 5,000 gold lead eight minutes in, and they're controlling the entire jungle from I'm So Fresh. He hasn't been able to get his red buff just yet, which he's not going to get at all, and he hasn't been able to get his blue. Absolute buff control here from SK Gaming. Blue and red taken away. Dragon taken, two turrets, five kills. This is all just piling up to one of those games where at 20 minutes you say, enough's enough here, guys. Let's quit this one. Uh, it's not looking good from the start. I mean, you never call a game early, that's for sure. We've seen so many throws over the years that it's not worth calling a game ever over. But <laughs> this is one of them that's really started off perfect. But look what Dio did in response, uh, response Joe. Look at the wards he had to put down. Investing in three pink wards when he basically had no money. He already died in the top lane once. All he has is a ruby pistol and only 300 gold to spend. We see. We look at Nif. He's over a thousand gold ahead of him with those two kills and two assists, obviously. But we do see Schleyer going in on Jezus. Yeah, Svenska actually was trying to get in the back. He might actually die from this one. He will. Schleyer picks up the kill, and crucially, those double buffs that they lost earlier on. That Schleyer 
Didn't get his chance at his own blue. He's gonna lose that one, but is that gonna be over? Nif's coming in here. Manages to land the hook onto I'm So Fresh. The box goes down. The spear actually hits Dude there at the back. I'm So Fresh, he's a dead man. Ace in the hole, no! He's managed to spell shield it. Nice timing there from I'm So Fresh, but will they keep going? Candy Panda now bearing down on towards Slayer. Spear hits, Ignite is ticking away. Flash from Candy Panda. It's Nif that picks up the kill. He gets the buff back, and he's now 3-0-2 with his Thresh. He can buy walls all day long. He can buy whatever he wants at this point. I think he's going to be tankier than his uh, jungler currently, but that's the Nif we know. That's the Nif. Always taking kills, always securing them, and always landing those hooks. No, and now this is better than the Nif we know. Why is it better? Because he's better. <laughs> Nif never had a start like this in LCS. I don't ever remember Nif having a start like this where he's hit like every single clutch hook. Spot on, definitely. And, and look at what he's got. He has the most kills on the team. He has the two assists. He's been in every kill minus uh, one so far, which is in the top lane. And he has 3,200 gold, which is rivaling pretty much everyone else on the team right now. I'm curious to see what he's going to go for. Obviously, he can pick up... Actually, he's going for Boots and an Oracle, so they might go for a 15-minute Baron here. <sighs> I, I'm not sure about that one. That would be very ballsy. Look what Freddy's doing in the top lane. He's actually farming past the turret. He's doing a proxy Renekton here. You don't really see that too often but he's keeping Doibi away from the turret and force him to see us while taking damage from them as well. And it also allows Freddy to do some good harass, as you're going to see here. That was a nice move from Doibi, though. Steps back and then taunts back through towards his own turret. <sighs> but Freddy is ahead in CS. They're ahead. Oh, I don't want to say across the board, to be honest, because Nanook, he's not really been involved in much of what's gone on so far. That's given him a bit of extra farm time, so he's level with Candy Pandas. We see Schleyer here. Actually may get this middle turret down. Jez is trying his best to actually stop that one from happening. Will keep it alive for at least this wave. But that's probably not going to be safe moving in. You can see the traps. Two from Nidalee, uh, three from Nidalee, and one from... Uh, Caitlyn there, that's a lot of damage, or maybe even more annoyance if you step on the Caitlyn trap. And look at Nif, he's just pushed on there through, as he is, in fact, going to lose that ward in just a second because of the pink that was put down just a little bit ago. And there is that middle turret coming back. So it's 3-2 in towers, 6-1 in kills. Credit where it's due to Millennium that they've managed to get two towers back, considering the start here. Yeah, and... Oh, we do see it. Here, oh, Pingo, I think... Yeah, okay, so... That's really going to test my camera work today. <laughs> And the thing is, with the Oracle that Nif picked up, they can gain full control of Dragon, full control of the buffs yet again, which is what they're currently doing. And also, they're getting the top turret off the top of this. So they are just fully strangling Millennium as much as they can, even pushing down this Tier 2 middle turret, which, here, which right now they should be able to take for free. Well, I'm so fresh coming across from this one. But again, you've got to be so careful because if you get hooked, you guaranteed pretty much a spear to come in, pilt over Peacemaker, shots from auto attacks from Candy Panda, plus an ace in the hole. They don't even need it. Tower's gone down. That's turret number five. And honestly, they could probably just rotate to the top here. And if you look what they're doing, they're grouping up Forcing on Millennium to do the same, and because of that, Freddy 122 has a two-level advantage. Uh, Svenskerns, even with I'm so Fresh, even though he's been farming away in the jungle, Jezus has a level advantage. Candy Panda has an item advantage as Freddy wants to go in on Doigby here, but it's not going to be able to take him down just yet. And now Dragon's back up, so SK's like, all right, well, we might as well take it. We have the Oracle. We have it. Actually, he hasn't popped it yet, but it's going to give him even more gold, and they're going to be up 6,000 gold now 13 minutes in. Well, this is not looking like an SK gaming that we've seen recently, I'll tell you that. They seem so coordinated i'm not sure if i mean we, we've got to factor in the the start for sk here the first blood coming down not only does it give you an advantage uh, advantage an advantage but it also gives you an a Morale mental boost. advantage yeah. like being first blooded right at the start of a game is like the worst mental start you can have to a game and dogby then we saw it on him he, he kind of walked down into the brush here as they were they just killed him. Like, he just walked into death, basically. Uh, so, it, certainly not uh, the best mental state, I think, that Millennium are in at this point. But SK, they're not missing a beat at this point. We can see that Svenskeren, he helped get his blue... or get the enemy blue buff over uh, towards his team. And he's now, for a second time, going to try and steal this red buff away. This time, though, now I'm so fresh. He's actually waiting. Who's going to have the better of it? And it is actually going to be I'm so fresh that gets that one. He's going to get the fear onto Svenskeren. We're going to see oh. Shake coming in. Well, there's the lantern rescue. RSK going to be able to carry on. I'm so fresh dives in. This fight is going to all kick off as Dude comes down as well. Doig is there at the front. Ace in the hole going to hit Dude. He's down to half HP. Nanook finally joining in as well. Oh, and a long range 
great spear from Jezus through the red buff camp. They're not done with this one just yet. Another spear lands on towards the new SK are going to look to push the Inip turret. And they can take it really well here. That was a great job by Spence Garen to know that he, his team had his back and committed I'm so fresh so far and so deep into that fight. He saw that Nocturne Ultimate go in onto him and he was like, crap, I need to back out of it, but it just didn't matter. Dude is just not tanky enough. He can't really survive as he's only level six right now to level eight of Nif. And that will be the first inhibitor going over to SK. And right now, Millennium, I'm not sure they can even fight him here. Oh, that's a good flash taunt coming down from Dogby, though. Nif here, he's going to get Fiat Schleyer. He's going to go down. No, he's still alive at the back. Auto attacks coming in from Jezus, who gets Fiat. Does manage to pick up the kill, though, as he actually used the cleanse there. Meanwhile, down at the bottom, double kill coming down for I'm so fresh as Dogby trying to have a go on Candy Panda. Needs to be real carefully with Freddy coming across as well. He's going to try and get into the bush. Surely taunt through. There's the Stun coming in from Renekton. Taunts back though and manages to stay alive somehow. Three for one there, I guess we could call that last engagement. But SK did manage to take down the inhib turret with it. Wow, and they pushed it to the brink too. I mean, Doiby's down to no health. I'm so fresh, basically has no health as well. And it looks like SK maybe stayed a little bit longer than than they wanted to and ended up losing three people. But in the end, did they really lose that much right now? Because with that inhibitor turret being down 15 minutes in, they could probably just walk in and take it, or if anything, just ward up the enemy jungle, control Baron, control Dragon, control the buffs, and just keep strangling them from gold. Well, you said 15-minute Baron, which is now past, but I don't think they'd be too far off from this one. SK, uh, in a 5v5, uh, are going to beat Millennium. I mean, Dogby, you have to give credit to him. When I talked about his, his maybe lacking mental state after what happened in the early game, you know, always going to get demoralized by that. He actually landed an amazing flash taunt there to get that one started off. Nif has now popped that Oracle. And this is where SK are going to start to get that vision control over the Baron area and really force Millennium's hand to stick around this area and look for things. But the fact is, Jezus, just one spear at this point. Things, Even though he's not got masses of items right now, he's not got masses of damage, we saw what it can do at this stage of the game to Millennium. Yeah, and he's only going to keep getting strong right now. He has 106 CS, which is pretty even with Schleyer. And if with the Oracle, with the Boots mobility, he should be able to clear all the coverage that Millennium has in their own jungle. He just needs to make sure to not get caught at all, and he will be able to clear this all out. And with all the ward coverage gone, Millennium's like, are they doing Baron if they don't see him on the map? Has Tio taken a spear to the face? Um, they have to contest Baron somewhat, but they're going to be going blind into all these bushes very soon. Yeah, going blind into bushes is... <laughs> Just a horrible scenario to be in. Nif actually getting caught by the charm, but Slayer not got the damage. Well, here comes I'm so fresh. Box put down by Nif. Is that gonna slow Slayer down enough? Svenska and coming across. <laughs> wow, that was a mid-air cocoon actually landing there onto Slayer as he charged in forward. They do manage to take down Jezus. Not ideal for SK getting caught out there, but there's still 7,000 gold in the lead on this one. One and a half minutes until the dragon comes back up. They're still in a commanding position. They are, but I wonder about Millennium's camp. Like, how are they thinking about this? The mental little bit of surge they just got from catching them out multiple times, from getting yeah. a three for one. They have to be thinking, you know, guys, we can do this. If they keep playing stupid like this, if they keep getting caught, we can easily take this one back. We can close that gold uh, difference, but we just need to get control of our jungle, which, dude, he needs to start getting more assists. He needs an Oracle. He just can't yeah. afford it. He needs an Oracle at this point. He's trying to pick up pink wards. We saw that. Very early game investment into pink wards three as well. If three pink wards are picked up early on to get control back at this bottom side of the jungle, to be fair, worked out pretty nicely for them if we look at the you know how the game's gone since then. But he needs it now because Nif with the Oracle on, with the Ruby Side Stone, is just completely dominating vision. And he just picked up a second Oracle here as well. Why not? I mean, he's going to give him so much control right now. And, you know, Dude, I, I was thinking back to why put three pink wards there. And obviously the blue buff was just taken. So there's no point of really doing that to control your blue. But he just wanted to make it so someone could gank for him in the bottom lane. And just keep uh, SK away from pushing the bottom lane when they don't have the ward coverage able to uh, do that. But right now, Doigby has the ultimate available. We see four people of SK grouped up here in middle. And they're struggling to take this inhibitor right now. Half of Slayer's health gone there from the ace in the hole. And another thing. How do Millennium defend on turrets here against this team? And Nidalee, you've got Candy Panda who's going to be throwing those Piltover Peacemakers through. You're going to have, you know, the the very real problem of Nif oh, landing Nif. a hook onto one. He may get caught out from this one. He is going to go down from this one. And he is finished off in the end by I'm So Fresh. 
maybe a little bit of overconfidence coming out here from SK, but they're actually with four men going to look to have a go on the turret. And this is what I was talking about. This is where we'll see how Millennium can defend it's against dangerous. the poke that they've got. Uh, Amsterfresh has the ultimate available. So does Doiby. They could go in this if they want to. If they can catch the right targets, we have Dude in a position to get over that wall as well. It looks like they might fight. Wow, Dude did, did just flashed too early. He just flashed too early. Wow, this that could be really, really bad in this one. We can see there that only Freddy is holding four men off right now. He's finally going to go low. Answer Fresh not going to be able to escape. Spears flying through. Not quite got the range to land onto the nuke. And that, they were going for that one there. Dude charged up his ultimate and flashed to cancel it. I, 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 don't, think he meant, I, mean, I don't think he meant to cancel it. It was just no, an accident right there. And you, I wonder... Because he would have been in position to fear someone in the middle of that, would have been in position to silence and obviously get his damage down. They might have been able to actually win that fight. But in the end, like you said, Freddy 1-2-2, 1v4, two, two, and he still was winning the fight. He got all four of them down to about 20% life off of that. And was even able to catch I'm So Fresh and pick up the kill. And even a surrender vote came in over from Millennium's side, but it was just one for four. And right now, I mean, SK still, even losing Nif right there, were able to go up against the five members of Millennium. Yeah, Nif needs to be a little bit weary about that one i mean it was three zero two or whatever he was like it's not as if he wasn't worth any money dying for those kills mm -hmm. he is and that's a way back in possibly uh, as you see just there pretty much soloing up that dragon it's another boost of gold and we're approaching a ten thousand gold lead here we're only just over the 20 minute mark as well the thing is with every kill they give up that means millennium can pick up a couple more items we see you know, Dio's got his boots. He has even another extra sight ward. He's trying to go for an Oracle or go for a Ruby sight stone to survive a little bit longer. But now Shleia has a DFG. You see Honestly Fresh getting pretty tanky here. Doivy's going to have a Sunfire Cape very soon. It's, you know, getting to the point where if SK keep feeding up over a couple of kills, Millennium will get some items that they need to start winning these fights. Look at the gold here as well. Between the supports, that tells a massive story, doesn't it? 3,000 gold that Nif is ahead on that front. And Oh, no. I'm so fresh as bottom right now. They're going to go for a push on this inhibitor. Yeah, and he's not going to be able to get back. He's going to have to recall, but... Surely they're going to lose the in him. Freddy, one, two, two, went one versus four in that last fight against them. And I'm so fresh. He's actually still not recalling from this one. He's still not coming back from it. They're going to lose this one. He's going to keep pushing, but honestly, this is not a race that he's going to win. He might, be, he might be able to get some damage onto the second turret, but they could just go for Baron if they wanted to right now. Nif still has an Oracle. They can clear all the vision. There is no ward coverage in the Baron pit for Millennium. If anything, they might send one back to deal with him just so he stops getting this turret down, but he's still taking it. Clearly, I mean, it's down to about half health at this point, and Kenny Pen is finally coming around from the side to pick him up. Yeah, Kenny Pen probably will kill him as well at this stage. Uh, but two turrets, so fresh, yeah, two turrets from that one. Yeah, they lost the inning, but it was open anyway. It was going down sooner or later. And now we finally do see Candy Panda actually come in there. He's not going to challenge for a kill. But he's going to force I'm So Fresh to back away someone. But look at this. The rest of the Millennium team are coming down, but they've been spotted by the wards from earlier. Nif going to get caught out. Charm lands onto him. He will actually flash back and look at Freddy again, right at the front of them all, doing great damage to Schleyer. Is he going to go down? Nocturne ulti is actually coming in. They're going towards the backside here, trying to lock out Candy Panda from the fight. Meanwhile, Freddy is somehow still alive at the back. Sven's current coming in. He managed to salang the cocoon. Ace in the hole comes through. Blocked by Dolby, but that leaves him now low. He will flash away from that one. Dies in the end, though, to Elise. And now, now SK can push through for a victory. And they can. They have to actually, they can do at least get a couple of uh, Nexus turrets down off the top of us. But with 20 seconds death on I'm So Fresh, 25 on Dolby, 20 on the nuke, they're looking at a free win here. Uh, well, not free, but they're looking at a win. Yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't quite free because they just won a massive team fight to get here, but. They should be able to finish off the game right here. They're gonna have Schleyer coming back into it. He doesn't have an ultimate available though. As he brings in there with the home guards. And so Fresh comes in as well, but SK have already taken down both Nexus turrets. Now I'm so Fresh gonna be the focus. The super minions even helping things out. Sven, uh, Sven, Shen trying to come in, but Sven manages to pick him up. And that will be those two inhib turrets going down. And well, an almost impossible comeback position I'd say now for Millennium. Yeah, I mean, remember this is a best of three though. So this yeah, game, of course, yeah, it's a best yeah. of three. So you have to wonder if at some points you might actually just throw it away, you know, surrender. Nah, as if by magic. That's it. I mean, I totally agree with this scenario. Like, if you're so far behind and you've had such a 
depressing game yeah. almost. Sometimes it really is better in a best of three where you've got to keep yourself motivated mm. and your hopes high to just say, you know what, that that was just, we just played horrible there. Nothing went our way. Everything went wrong. <laughs> Let's just get that one over and done with. And that's what they've done. I mean, SK kills across the board. Three for Nif, two for Candy Panda, four for Jezus, three for Svenska, and two for Freddy. Like, they just couldn't handle him in a 5v5 scenario. There's no way around it. And I like the adaptation they threw out as well. I mean, remember we're saying that SK wanted to invade the top side, put a ward down to see who was in the top lane. They didn't get that ha or to happen. They got a kill in the end, but... With that, they went bottom still with Caitlyn and Thrush, and then they had Sven Skarin come, and they pushed that turret down. They pushed the next one down, took Dragon right off the back of that, took away Blue Buff. Like the adaptation they threw out right there was perfect. That was a that was a very good SK game, and that looked like they've been yep. training for months together. <laughs> uh, to be honest, like that was such an incredible performance. But as you said, rightly so, best of three yep. Millennium. Get a chance to say, you know what, screw that game, forget about that game. Let's not even talk about what happened because it just all went wrong. And let's make sure to ban Renekton uh, this time. Probably going <laughs> to ban Renekton against Freddy, which is something that you see all the time. Like, I'm not sure why they let that through. Obviously, had different priorities uh, with the Aatrox and what have you coming out towards Svenskrim. But either way, brilliant start, very strong start from SK Gaming. They go 1-0 to zero up in our first best of three. They're just one game away from the Intel Extreme Masters Cologne Amateur Tournament at the end of November. Guys, we're going to be taking a very quick break, but when we come back, we'll move into game number two between SK Gaming and Millennium. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> 